Melanie from Melanie's Muses here, where I muse about things in the entertainment world that are entertaining to me, and sometimes a few weird and random other videos too, but hopefully whatever I'm using about, you guys stay along for the ride. As you can probably tell from my somewhat unusual appearance from my videos, today is going to be a little bit different. Remember how I always say, if you have something you want to see me do, shoot me a request, and if I can oblige, I will do it. Today is one of those videos. Musa Amanda and her daughter Brayley sent me a request to see if I would attempt a makeup look. Some of you might remember my attempted makeup back when I did Mrs. Lovett from Sweeney Todd. If you missed that crazy video, you can check it out in the link up there. But basically, I have no professional makeup skills. I don't know what any of the stuff is called and I literally couldn't find a tutorial to do the Mrs. Lovett makeup that was for beginners like me. So I made my own with trial and error along the way. And this video is probably going to be a lot like that. So Amanda and Brayley sent me a picture that they would like me to copy. I'm going to put that up next to me as a reference as I do this. Their only request was that instead of the flower crown, I use a tiara, which I can absolutely do because I wouldn't have a flower crown, but do have plenty of tiaras ready to put on my head. I do want to give credit for this picture. I don't know who the actual model is. It has Jordan on there as a sort of watermark thing. This picture was actually found on Glaminati's Pinterest site. That's where they found it and sent it to me. And from doing a little bit of digging, it seems that Glaminati generally shares really cool makeup, beauty tips, things like that. So that is why I found it. If you know who the model is, please let me know. I would love to be able to credit them. And hopefully I don't butcher this look too badly. Okay, with that being said, let's jump right in. So I already put my base on. The base in the picture just looks like a nice neutral base. Obviously she looks a little bit more tan than me if I was to do that color base. I would have to go and get a spray tan or something. I'm just pale, but that's okay. You know what? Sometimes pale skin is great for having colors pop on it and what have you. Also, I figure that everyone has their own sort of base routine. And depending how old you are, you probably need either a little more than some people or a little less. Me, I definitely go for the more is more approach. So I use a concealer, a foundation, I dab it all over. And you can see that I also have done my eyebrows and my lips just because this is more of a cosplay makeup. So you want the makeup to really like pop. When I do my makeup normally, I start with the eyes. So that's what I'm going to do today. My aim is to keep this as simple and straightforward as possible. Be warned in advance there may be some errors that we have to go back and fix. And by we, I mean me. I will have to go back and fix them because they're on my face. But I don't plan on editing any of these out. I haven't done a practice run. I'm going at this literally trying to copy the picture. So, okay guys, let's do this. So, for the eyes, you can see there's a lot of white on there. Now, this is a tip that I actually picked up when I did a little beauty tutorial with Jenny Lane. And when I say I did a beauty tutorial with Jenny Lane, she had an offer up where it didn't cost anything, but I could FaceTime with her and she would go over a really crazy look and we did some really fun 80s glam makeup. But I did learn a lot of tips. If you haven't joined Jenny Lane's beauty group, I highly recommend it. She posts videos that are really easy to follow. She doesn't use crazy terminology. She makes it kind of straightforward, a bit like what I'm doing. I mean, maybe probably not as straightforward as that. I think she has an idea what she's doing when she starts. I'm going to kind of wing it. So I'm going to use a white all over my eyes. And I warn you right now, it's going to look a little bit scary. I did this when I did the makeup with Jenny Lane to get the really bright eye popping look. And you do look crazy, crazy when you have all the white, but it works out in the end. So it's okay. Now, all of the colors I'm using on my eyes today, I'm going to do from one palette. This is the Eye Seek palette and it comes with 50 colors. So you get a lot of colors in this palette and it wasn't super expensive. I mean, actually Amazon just sent it to me, but a part of the buying program. But look at all those colors, you guys, especially if you're starting out or like me, only have one eyeshadow set that you use for absolutely everything that you do. This is a really good option. So white, just going on white. So that's the one I'm going to be using, the white. And I'm going to use a brush that I have for white. Okay, so I'm going to start using a fairly small brush. I have no idea what this one's called, but it's kind of small and it's, it's soft and flexible, but it will hold a little bit because you're really going to want to pack some color on. So, and when I say color, I mean pack white on. Lots and lots of white. So, we are going to absolutely cover my eye. And if you see me looking off to the side, I have a mirror here as well because I'm not very good at doing things backwards and I'm not very good at doing things in a camera screen because I'm not a beauty blogger, guys. I'm literally doing this. 
to see if I can do it. <laughs> so you just want to put lots and lots of white on. Now if you look in the picture, hers comes all the way down. So don't be afraid to pack in like a whole bunch in the eye socket bit. Or the eye socket bit, you know, right in there around the eye. Now, normally when I do it, I would, when I do my looks, anyway, I would have some sort of colour going under there. But I noticed in the video, she, in the picture, she has sort of black going under there and then white eyeliner. So we will try and do something to kind of match that a little bit. We'll see how that goes. Okay, that's looking pretty good. See what I mean? It starts to look a bit like, oh my goodness, glowy skeleton eyes. But, a tip from Jenny Lane, if you want your colours to pop, especially if you're doing like bright colours, white is the way to go. Don't be afraid to use the white. Now, a lot of people, if you see them on tutorials and things, use a primer. You can get a primer in white. But, doing it this way, for me, you don't have to buy anything extra. If you get a palette that has like a good selection of colours in, most of them have a white in there, as long as it's pure white. I think it's good enough to be pure white. So, and you don't need to worry about it being too perfect either because you can do a lot of blending and stuff. Just pack some white on there. Oh, there we go. That's a lot of white. Glowy, glowy. Okay, we look kind of even. Actually, I think that one has a little bit more on. So, yeah, pack that on. Okay, now she has black. Ooh, that's really crazy scary, huh? So, she has black going under her eyes. You gotta find my little black brush. So, the black under her eyes, I'm not sure if she uses an eyeliner or not. I'm not really that good with a liner to be able to get that close to the lashes. And I also think she might have some kind of false lashes on the bottom, so I don't know what we're going to do about that. We'll figure it out. But I'm going to use my black eyeshadow, which is, can I go down the screen? Right there. So underneath the white, the black. And I'm just going to put a really, really thin line. I'm using a brush that's really hard and small. And you know what? You can get a cheap set of brushes that has like one of everything for about ten or eleven dollars. So, okay, I'm gonna have to look in the mirror behind to get this. Now she goes all the way from the inside. Some of that we are gonna have to attempt with eyeliner, which is kind of scary. We'll do that when we do the top line a bit. Okay, so we'll get uh, that one in. So, I'm just going to do a thin line there. Now, hers, she has huge lashes on, which we are going to attempt to go with that. Okay, it's a bit smudgy on the sides, but I think it'll be okay. And you can see, even just by adding that underline, suddenly my eyes don't look quite so scary and insane. So, same thing on this side. We're going to go all the way along, out to the end. And you, again, you don't have to worry about being too careful up here. Because you're going to have lashes and liner and all sorts of crazy stuff over there. So, okay. I think that kind of takes care of that. That's really smudgy on that side. Smudge, smudge. So, okay. We're going to leave that at that for right now. Yeah, that'll be fine. It'll be fine. That is my general motto about this. It will be fine. Okay. So, looking at the picture, she has quite a lot of dark coming across her shading in the sides. Can't really see what colour it is because she has her eye open, but Braley did ask if I could do something with a purple theme. So because she's got purple in her eyebrows and everything, I'm going to go with the purple idea. And I'm going to use, I think this purple right here, that looks kind of blue on the picture, but in real life it's actually pretty purple. I was going to use this one, but that I don't think will go with the hair and everything, it looks a bit too pinky. So I'm going to go with this one that's a real purple. That's really weird that that looks kind of blue on there. It looks purple in real life. And I'm just going to use one of these little fluffy brushes. I don't know if it's actually a crease brush, but it's the brush I use to do in the creasy bit. I learned that from the Jenny Lane tutorial. So, got a little bit classier than um, the Sweeney Todd video where I knew what nothing was. So, I'm just going to shove a bit of colour on there and take off any excess. And then literally, I'm going to take it just at the edge of my eye and just rub it across. And you see, because you've got the white under it, it automatically starts to pop. Which is super fun. We like that. Yeah, I think that's kind of what she I think she actually used a darker one. Because we're going to go with pinks and purples, we're going to stick with that for now. See, so yeah, that's not so hard. I'm trying to keep this so that we use as few 
colors and things as possible because if i'm doing makeup in that le uh, simple is the way to go so yeah just up where the little crease of my eye is and because i have pretty big eyes and because i'm going to be putting lashes and things on i'm not going to worry too much about coming down here so that it doesn't look like i have black eyes i'm just going to have it up in the corners there now the nice thing is because i already have loads of white all over everything i don't really have to worry too much about a lot more of the look with the eye makeup if you i'm actually pretty impressed that that was pretty impressed so far this is super easy that's probably tempting face yeah i'm gonna do that and then i know you can get what kind of i never know what a blending brush is supposed to look like so i just get this one that looks like a fan because i like it it's really soft and I just brush it over and it just stops there being any harsh lines. Not that I get very many when I use that fluffy brush. But if you're doing more intricate looks then you'd probably want a proper blending brush. But we're going to go with this. So this is the brush that I'm using. Big fan brush. Technical name. Or small fan brush. I do have bigger ones. This is so small fan brush. Okay. So that is probably what I'm going to do for right now to just leave my eyes like that. And I'm going to go for the eyebrows before I start messing around my lashes and everything and the reason I'm going to do that is because when you're going like this you are just asking to smudge your eyeliner so that is why eyeliner not at the beginning and I managed to get purple somehow all the way on the inside of my face where's my white brush gone where's my white brush so you know what if that happens just go in and stick more white over it I mean I guess I could go and get a makeup wipe and clean it up but screw it more white for the win. Okay, eyebrows. If you look at her eyebrows, if you zoom in, she sort of has purple out here and pink on the inside. You guys, I used to be super afraid of doing anything near my brows, like super afraid. And then I realized that you can just take it off if you screw it up, it's not a big deal. It's not like you're tweezing them or you know, permanently styling them. It's makeup, you can just wash it off. Which is why I tend to go for shadows, I don't have any of the fancy eyebrow kits and what have you. I literally am just going to use the same eyeshadows that I have in my hand. And I'm going to use them in my eyebrows. With a very small hard brush. And again, that looks blue on there. It is purple in my hand, but blue. It's purple. It's actually the same purple as this, which you can see if I go back. But for some reason, my camera's making it look blue. So, very thin, kind of hard brush. And you need it to be kind of hard because you've got to... Get it in your brows and you don't want it going everywhere so that you look like you have crazy face. And for the purple, I'm just going to use the same purple that I already use on my main eyes. And she has it on the outside. So, definitely going to have to look in the mirror behind here. So, I am just going to not even really do a whole lot other than add some colour in. Because I'm not very good at brows and I don't really know how to do them. And hers looks super pretty and professionally done. But you know what? Adding a bit of colour is fine. It'll be fine. So there is some kind of rule I saw in a Jenny Lane post that you can sort of measure out where your eyebrows and that are supposed to go. But I wasn't paying close enough attention, so I don't really know. So we're just going to go with... That part's going to be purple. And then I'm going to get another small brush because I don't want to mix my colours up. So this one's a little bit more angled, not for any other reason that this was the other brush that came to hand that's small and is pretty firm. I also use this one, this style a lot when I'm doing my under eye stuff. And I'm going to pick something kind of bright pink. So I'm going to go with this one. I'm thinking about it, I'm looking at this, you're going, no, I want this one, no, I want this one. We're going to go with this one, right here. And we're just going to use that on the inner part of the eyebrows. Just because she has pink in there. Oh, there you go. So you look kind of clown-like, but it'll be good. But the time you got the hair on, and I'm going to do a purple wig and a tiara, no one's going to care if, you, if your eyebrows aren't exactly perfect. Okay, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with that. She also has a lot of gems all over there, so I figure that the bling will sort of detract from anything that I screw up too badly. Right, guys? Yeah, right. Okay, so that seems to be it color wise for now i might have to go in and brighten up or add some extra purple we'll see how that goes so now the scary part is the eyeliner i am not very good at top liner i have one wing style that i tend to go for and i see she has it all the way coming down inside 
so my plan is to try and get it to come down and out and then match up with the eye shadow the dark eye shadow they've got underneath we'll see how it goes i mean seriously how bad can it be if all else fails i will have to go and get makeup remover which i probably should have brought in here with me but i didn't and I'm just using an e.l.f. eyeliner. You use pretty much any liquid eyeliner. I, for whatever reason, I love the e.l.f. liquid eyeliner. It's really inexpensive. And it's a liquid one with a thin point. I can't do the pen eyeliners, which I have a feeling she might use the pen. I can't do that. I just can't make them work. So that's not going to happen. And we're going to put more on the top later on when we do the lashes because I use magnetic lashes. Okay, so... Again, excuse me while I look at the mirror behind because there's actually no way I'm going to be able to do this in the camera thing and not make a complete hash of it. I mean, there's not actually any guarantee that I'm not going to make a complete hash of it even looking into the mirror, so, yeah. See, the idea is you want to just try and keep the eyeliner as close to your lashes as you can. I mean, this is a more dramatic look, so I feel you can probably get away with pretty much whatever you want. Okay, so she draws all the way down here. I feel like I'm just going to end up drawing on my face. We'll see. And then I'm not... You can't really tell how much of a wing she has going on. I'm going to assume she has a pretty decent one because she has really big lashes. And I feel that if you have that big of a lash, you probably want a fairly decent wing. So I am just going to bring this out sort of along the shape of my eye and join it up with the shadow that I have underneath. Now, when you're doing a wing, one of the tips Jenny Lane gave me is don't pull your skin. See how I just did that without pulling it anywhere? It's really tempting to sort of pull the skin tight. I always used to do that, pull it tight to try and get a straight line. Then what happens is you let it go and it like squinches down, which is not a cool look. So tip from Jenny Lane, thanks Jenny. Another tip, okay. And doing my other eyeliner is always really hard because my hand has to go backwards and he doesn't really like it. And already I can see I've got more eyeliner on this side. You know what? I can just add more to the other side. It'll be grand. It'll be grand because I've been talking to Susan Harris a lot and she says grand a lot. At least I've managed to not say like a thousand times in this video. Which could happen after a chat with Susan. I tend to adopt the like very quickly. All right, so I'm just gonna carry on with this. And same as on the other side, I'm gonna take it out just kind of where my eye makeup goes without pulling on the skin and just up a little bit and join it up with the shadow that I've got underneath. And that one look, definitely looks like it has more. But you can see, even without doing much more, that scary white at the beginning is already to starting starting to look a little less scary okay so i'm just gonna join that up and i'm gonna draw it in my eye apparently that wasn't good so i'll get that later all right so this has to come down down here somehow down yep down i need to go down on this side god this is tricky eyes are tricky you guys super posh eyeliner it's tricky. I mean, it does look super cool and dramatic, though. I can always see I'm making a mess in there. That's all right. Lashes cover a multitude of sins, guys. Okay, so down. It's actually drawing down onto my nose, which is kind of weird. Hmm. Mine looks more like a crisscross. I might get a Q-tip and just fix that. Yeah, that's going to be the plan. I'm going to grab a Q-tip. So remember what I said, if things sort of go wrong, we'll just fix it. This is one of those things where this now looks like a crisscross in there, and it's supposed to look like a straight line. So we're going to try and use a Q-tip to get that out of there. Yeah, that works pretty well. And then we will just pop some more white. Where's my white brush? Pop some more white back over it, because we just wiped half the white away. And there you go! Look, look at that, crisis averted. No big deal. No big deal! Okay, so I'll leave that there. Take two with the eyeliner. I'm just not good. At, I don't know if my eyes are the wrong shape or I just don't have the talent. To... Okay, that's just going to have to work. So we've got to do the same thing on this side. 
Now we have a drip underneath that eye. You guys, my liquid eyeliner skills are not on point. Ever. Ever on point. So, but we will fill this in. Yeah, that's just going to have to work. So, that's kind of the eyeliner. Kind of. Hmm. We will see how it goes. But we'll go with it. We're going to roll with it for right now. I'm just going to put a little more on this side because I feel that that's... Yeah. Okay. So, in the picture, I noticed she has white on the inside of her lashes. Now, I only very recently discovered... This is actually by Piffa of London, and I love it. It's a white crayon. You can use it for all sorts of things. I pretty much just use it to go on the inside of my eyes. So I'm gonna just pop that in there. So let's see how that. Just draw it on. And it's one of those things that drawing on there now doesn't bother me. I'm sure it bothers some people. It doesn't really look any different on the camera. I probably want to stick a bit more down there. Slather it on. All the white. Oh, there we go. Ta da! So, do the other side as well, so we match. Matching is probably a good plan. Yeah, I'm definitely not loving this eyeliner around my eyes. I feel like I look a bit like a panda. But hopefully, when it's all done and. Okay. There we go guys, what are you thinking? Different anyway. Okay, well we'll leave that for right now. We may have to go in and just touch up this under eye part. We will see. Now we are gonna do false lashes, we are gonna do magnetic lashes, but even with magnetic lashes, I still put regular mascara on first because you're gonna have shadow and things under, and this is just a Maybelline one, I think, yeah, Maybelline falsies. You can get loads and loads of eyelash, um, loads and loads of mascara, but if you're only using it, like as a top up to your false lashes, I'm not splurging on expensive mascara. I also say I wouldn't get really cheap mascara either because that doesn't tend to work out so well. But this one is pretty good, so. You can also use clear mascara. If you're going to be using the false lashes and you're not very good with mascara, you can use clear mascara. I don't have any because I just use the black. But you can use uh, clear mascara if you're going to be using the false lashes and it will work. So while that's drying, I'm going to move on and do the cheeks because I'm a big fan of getting as much done as I can in a shorter space of time. Now, her cheeks are super pink. That is a lot of blood. This definitely not, would not be a look that you're going to be wearing to the store. Now, Pink blusher, no sorry, I have a Mary Kay strawberry cream blusher, which is there. The reason I have this blusher is back in the day when Emily was in dance, she had to have this exact color and we never got rid of it. And now pink is kind of becoming a thing, so I'm going with it. And I just have, a, I'm pretty sure this is actually a blusher brush, but I like the size of it, so I'm gonna use this one for my blusher. And I'm gonna put loads on. And I'm probably going to end up looking a bit clownish, but you know, hey, we're good with that, right? So, I don't know what the rules are for the blusher. I was always taught that you suck your cheek in and you put it on cheekbone. So, hers looks like it goes on the cheekbone and a bit below, but that's the method I'm going with. And it's probably not the best one, but it's what I'm going to do. Because it's what I know. I also remember you're supposed to do it in circles. That was something Jenny Lane taught me. And I never forget, because I always go like that. You're supposed to do it in circles to give you a softer look, so. Wow, that's pink. That is a lot of pink up there. Oh, there we go. Uh, you know what, guys? That's, I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty close to what she has in the picture. We're rocking this. It feels really weird doing circles. I'm not sure I'm a circle girl. Apart from TV show The Circle. So you have to remember this is a costume look. No one is expecting you to go out and about with this much blusher on. Otherwise people would look at you like you're a crazy person. Okay. So there's the, the lot of pink blusher. Ooh, that's very pink. So we're gonna put some um, highlighter over that anyway, so it won't be so bad. But while we are waiting to do that, I am going to put on the liner for my magnetic lashes. 
Ooh, I'm gonna grab my here. Come here, Magnus Blushes. Come here. Sorry. Okay, so while it's going on, we're going to do the magnetic lashes. Well, the eyeliner for the magnetic lashes because you have to let it dry. So, pretty much any magnetic lash set you get. This one is one that I just got and it came in this box. I don't even know who it's by, but these are the ones we're using today. Just says magnetic eyeliner and lashes kit. I don't know who they're by. This one comes with a whole bunch of different eyelashes, which I like. Do like a selection because we're gonna go with some crazy lashes on this one. You can get lashes like the magnetic ones that are more natural, which I normally wear. I can't get the eyeliner out. Okay. So magnetic eyeliner. But today we're gonna go crazy lashes. Crazy lashes, guys. Okay. So magnetic eyeliner. You have to give that a really good shake because how it works is there are little metal particles in the eyeliner. Ooh. Gonna need those. Little magnetic particles in the eyeliner. If you watch my video, you can actually get a machine that will do this for you. I don't know why anyone would be using that, especially at $55. But if you did want to see what the machine is, you can check it out in the video up there. I'll put a link. And this is just like a liquid eyeliner, but with the metal stuff bits in it. So it just looks like a regular, uh, regular liquid eyeliner. If you're not a liquid eyeliner girl, you can definitely get the pens. If you're not a liquid eyeliner person, you can get the pens. They have the magnetic eyeliner pens. Again, as I can't use regular liquid eyeliner, I definitely wouldn't be attempting that with a magnetic one. So, what I'm going to do is actually over the top of the eyeliner I've got, I'm going to put this magnetic liner and I'm just going to do it along my lash line because I don't want to be messing around with this right in the corners of my eyes. It's not for decoration. This is literally to hold the lashes on. So, You just put that on, and you need to make sure you put a decent amount of this on because it's got to hold your lashes in place. And the little magnets stick to it. So I like to dab mine because I like to make sure those magnets have plenty to stick to. And the other thing that they don't tell you, a little bit up in the corner because my lashes are gonna be big. Another thing they don't tell you is you have to let this dry really well before you try and stick the lashes to it, otherwise, You'll get in a big mess, or I get in a big mess. Maybe you won't get in a big mess. Maybe you've got more idea about this than me. So same thing on this side, just along my lash line. And dab it on, dab, dab, dab. Pretty thick. And then I'm gonna let that dry. I know I'm looking in the mirror again. Oh, I can't look in the camera. I can't do it in the camera. I don't know how these beauty bloggers do it looking in the camera. When I did my other video for the Halloween one, I did it on my iPad before I got my very lovely posh camera for Christmas. For my husband and my daughter. Ooh, look at that. I just blocked that right up there. Not good. So we'll whack that off. Or not. It doesn't want to come off. There it goes. Yep, they got me this really nice camera to do all my nice videos and it records beautifully. But the screen is like right there, it's like, okay, there's no way I can actually do my makeup on that. And I'm not even going to pretend that I can. This is like real time stuff. Okay, so I've dabbed that along. I think that should be enough. So that's going to sit and dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to go for highlighter. Now, highlighter is something I only discovered in the last year or so. And actually, my daughter Emily introduced me to it. And again, this is an e.l.f. Um, elf highlighter. So this is an e.l.f. highlighter. I've tried loads of different ones. I have one over here that's a Rimmel highlight. And I've tried some really posh name brand ones. And you know what? This little e.l.f. highlighter is, for me, by far the best. And I need to find my brush. Now, the little, um, the brush... Uh, now the blusher brush you saw earlier actually came in a set with this one. This is the best highlighter brush ever, in my opinion. It's really weirdly shaped. What it does is it literally hugs your cheekbone and makes putting highlighter on so easy. So I just whack loads of highlighter on, especially for a look like this, because it's really, really shimmery up there. And 
Shine is good, people. Shine is good. It's a, it didn't used to be. Do you remember when? Well, some of you will remember. We used to be told no shine. We used to get all those blotting things and whatever. And shine was bad. Now shine is good. Well, it's good for these looks anyway. Shine, shine, shine. So yeah, that's a lot of shimmer. Oh, pretty. And it just gives it a little ethereal feel to it. Although I will admit, I pretty much use highlighter all the time for all of my looks. I just don't normally have this much blusher on. But that's good. Okay, so I think we're ready to put the magnetic lashes on. I debated whether I was going to do the stickery bits first, but I'm figuring I can probably judge it better once I've got the magnetic lashes on. Now, as I said, I'm going to go for these super huge dramatic lashes, ugh, super huge dramatic lashes at the bottom. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I figured out. So I might not be a beauty person, but I am a common sense person. And that's sometimes. Now, if I just hold this up, and if you can see, this is way longer than my eye. So if I was to stick this on, it would either come too far this way or go way out the side. So what I do is I have a pair of scissors. These are actually embroidery scissors, but I love them for this. And I've learned, these have little magnets on the back, going all the way along there. See if I can actually balance the lashes because they're magnets. And I found for me, that cutting one magnet length off, so I still have a magnet at the end to hold it, but let's see at the end. So I'm literally going to cut right at the end of the magnet. And you do, I do recommend having a pair of scissors that you only use for this because this will not be very good for your regular scissors. So there's the eyelash, and that's what I cut off. See, there's one magnet length that I cut off. And then the smaller part of the lashes goes on the inside and literally you just pop them on across the top of your lashes and boom lashes so you can just press them down at the edges to make sure it's gonna hold and seriously it is as simple as that and look at the dramatic difference instantly when you put the lashes on it's like boom I can only tell I might have to put a little bit more eyeliner there because lots of eyeliner. But yeah. So I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one. I'm going to grab my scissors. And you do need to make sure you take it from the outside one because these lashes are set up so that they have shorter ones on the inside and longer ones on the outside. Oop. And I dropped it. Okay, so. Get my embroidery scissors again and exactly the same as with the other one. You just find where the edge of that magnet is and snip and there you go one magnet worth of lashes there's the lashes and then you pop that onto the other eye wow these are a lot of lashes aren't they that's a lot of lashes going on right there okay lashes on you go and i for some reason i always have more issues on this side than on the other side and I think I put those too far out. Yeah, I did. That's what I love about the magnetic ones. You get it wrong, just pull it off and put it on again. Okay, there we go. Okay, on you go, lashes. So they are just gonna stick on there. Some crazy looking lashes. Now, you can just leave it like that. Personally, I like to put a coat of mascara on to sort of fix my lashes to the other lashes and again clean mascara clear mascara works really well for that as well but it also enables you to make sure that the lashes are all sticking up especially if like me you just kind of like squished them back on what do you think guys and these lashes fun i'm such a fan of magnetic lashes okay so she has super dramatic lashes now we have super dramatic lashes wow okay so before, one last thing before we start sticking stickers on, we're almost done guys, that wasn't too bad, right? Is the lipstick. Hmm. Now, it looks to me like she has a liner on and then just gloss, so we're going to go with that. Not the best eyeliner type person, so we will see. Probably should have sharpened this as well. In fact, actually I might just sharpen that, hold on a sec. Sharpen my eyeliner because that's looking a little bit blunt. And I didn't check it before I opened this, so... Yeah, before I started filming, I just 
got my pink eye um pink lip liner out and was like okay now we have a nice sharp liner which i think especially as that looks kind of stylized we're gonna have to go with that so lip liner and i'm gonna have to try and draw a slightly more careful line than i normally would because that's like the focus for it <laughs> Yep, that'll work. Now she has a really nice cupid bow, but looking at her picture, I think that is actually her cupid bow. I don't think that is particularly enhanced by the makeup. So I'm just gonna follow my natural bow there, which is quite small. And then go down the side. The trouble with this is I usually use eyeliner, um, eyeliner, lip liner as sort of a base for my whole makeup, or my whole lipstick. And that won't work for this look. Okay, actually, you know what? I mean, that's not too bad. And it looks kind of glossy and it looks super sparkly in the middle. Now, I have a Senegent's gloss that I got from Jenny Lane and I love this gloss. This is a rose gloss. I use it over the top of so many of my lipsticks and it sort of holds them into place. And when I undo it, <laughs> the stick pops out. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I'm just gonna put a lip gloss on and I'm gonna see how that looks. What do you think? I think it kind of looks right. That lip line looks really heavy to me. What do you think, guys? So she has real shimmer in the middle. And I actually have... This was a fabulous shiny glitter. I don't think you actually need it. But I'm just going to pop a little bit on there just to see what it does. Because I love this. This was a Be Fabulous kit. And it came with that. Actually, I think this was the... Oh, this was a Lady Gaga eyeliner from House Laboratories. Their makeup is a little bit expensive, but... It is really, really good makeup, but you can definitely get less expensive using a pink lip liner. You can probably get one for a few dollars, whatever, especially if you're not going to be wearing it very often. Uh, this one, I think, came with a set. It came with a pink, pink glass, and I want to say it came with a lip liner, but I would have no idea where that was now. But anyway, this little sparkle, I'm going to put just in the very top bit there. So that kind of works. As she says, as she just puts the lips together, so I will think. So there, I think for the makeup bit, I'm kind of done. What do you guys think? I think it looks kind of like it. Not too bad, right? Her eyes are definitely more dramatic. I'm definitely struggling with that eyeliner look. And I'm not going to mess with it. I think that's just a no-go. But it's about to get crazy up in here. Are you guys ready? See all the stickers she has over her face? We're going to do the stickers. So a little while ago, Amazon sent me... A whole bunch of these little eye stickers. So I can't decide if I'm going to go with sparkly silver ones. Just can't get that shot. Those are the iridescent ones. Those are different shapes. I don't think I'm going to use those. So it's going to be down to pearls or sparkles. I think I'm going to try. Maybe I'll mix it up. All right. So we're going to stick these stickers on. And literally they come on a clear little sheet. Just like that. And you just peel them off and stick them on. So I'm going to go with. Actually I'm going to go with sparkly ones. Let's see, she has one sort of in the middle there. Can't even see it on the camera. Okay, well it's there. I know it's there. Then she has one. It's, actually, I didn't even get that in the middle. That's a fail. Ooh, that comes off super easily. Stick. Yeah, we're going to go with these. Okay, so there's one. You'll see it when the light hits it. So what does she have? She has like a little... Okay, we won't use that one. I can see how this is going to go. There's going to be more of these on the floor than there are landing on my face. These are tricky. Probably should have played with these before, but hey, where would the fun in that be, right? Does that look about right? Yeah, we'll go with that one there. And now I need another one that's that size. Oh, these are all different sizes. Oh, they go down the line. Okay, that's kind of handy to know. So I'll put another one of those there. Or not. Stayed on my finger, guys. Okay, when I do this, I'll probably fast forward the, all this next bit of putting the stickers on because there's a lot of stickers. 
and it's probably going to take me a long time so if this I'll switch this to fast forward and I'll just keep sticking them on and see how it goes Okay, you guys, I think I'm going to call that a done. Because there's a whole lot of stickers, and they're really fiddly. I think it's the hardest part of this makeup has been the stickers. But what do you think? Give me a couple minutes, and I'll be back with the hair and the makeup. That's really great. You can't even see the stickers. But I will get a really good picture of it. But they're there. They're there. Oh, and that one's gone. They do not, they, she has a sticker right there, and it does not want to stay on me. So I'll try one more. If that one falls off, then it's just going to stay off. So, I will be right back once I have the hair and the crown on. See you guys in a minute. Okay, you guys, what do you think? I think it actually turned out pretty well. I'm gonna try and get a super fun picture with it, with probably a different top on. But yeah, as always, huge thank you to everyone who sticks around to see what I am talking about, especially when I do something a little bit different like this. Amanda and Briley, I hope you really enjoy how it turned out. I'm going to put a link to all the products I know I used in the description so you guys if you want to grab them you can definitely check those out. As always if you like this video please do all the fun YouTube things like comment and subscribe especially comment I'd really love to hear what you think of the look what you think of the idea of these videos and of course if you guys have a video you want to see let me know as you can see I'm happy to oblige if I can. If you think I look like a fun person to hang out with, you would be right. And you should join me every Sunday on my Facebook page. I am live with my husband Greg. We do crazy things, we have giveaways, we talk about books, TV, whatever pops up. It's definitely a fun place to be. All the cool people are in the comments, so if you're a cool person, you should be there. Every Sunday, noon Eastern time on my Facebook page. And be sure you're checking out my website, melaniesmusic.com, for all things music related. We have guest articles, reviews, features, giveaways, more giveaways, giveaways everywhere. Links to all the vlogs and so much more. Plus new stuff being added every day. So if you don't see something you like up there now, check back regularly. You never know what's gonna be next. And finally, make sure you are clicking that notification bell so you don't miss when I next have a video up. Only things you can definitely count on for 2021 are Forgotten Future Fridays and Mel Cool Mondays. Zoom interviews on Wednesday when I have them available. Weird and random other videos when I feel like them, by request. Or if I've got something I wanna talk about. Yeah, you know, any of those things could happen. But for now, I hope to see you next time.